What's going on guys? Rhino Bones here with an unboxing and review thing. Today I've got a 3D printer from Creality and I have been waiting and waiting and waiting to buy one of these things for years now. I've got 3D files that I've been collecting since basically the whole advent of 3D printing at home and I figured today was the right time to pull a trigger so I uh, picked this thing up. I got the Hallett 1, I think it's the CL60 and it is a resin 3D printer. In addition to this, I did pick up some extra resins, and I picked up a uh, cleaning chamber and all of that stuff. Uh, I'm really going all out on this because I kind of want to make my own action figures. That's the main draw for picking up a 3D printer, especially one of these resin ones, is making toys. So I've actually already made a little miniature of myself. I haven't printed it yet. You guys are going to get to see that. And um, on my iPad, I actually used a program called Nomad Sculpt, and I created a little figure's head, and I kind of turned it into a little torso thing that you sit up, and it's like that tall. It's going to be pretty neat. I am going to print that one out, too. But I tell you what, I've got something like 4,000 files that I've been collecting over the years of, ooh, I want to print that, ooh, I want to print that. So this is going to be an extremely expensive habit. And I'm really looking forward to it. I don't know if my wife is prepared for all of the insanity that's about to ensue. That was my cell phone. I'm going to put that on mute, and then I'm going to unbox this. So here's the box it comes in. It is packaged pretty nicely. All of the edges are sealed up, and this sucker weighs just under 20 pounds. Um, yeah, it's quite a massive beast here. So... I'm going to get started and show you guys all of the pieces, as is tradition. First thing out of the box, a piece of cardboard. Next up, we've got the manual. We've got the scraper, we've got the data card, and we've got some little filters. Everything you need to uh, get started there. Got an envelope with some screen protectors in it. Even more filters. We've got an envelope of release film. We got a power cable. Last but not least, we've got the Hallett One itself. This is a resin 3D printer, and I'm ready to tear off this plastic and see what we can actually accomplish. Stuffed inside of this top section was the printing plate. I am going to have to clean that off because apparently they glued them in. Now here is the actual Hallett One. It does have a screen right here for input and selections. And up here is the screen that shines a light onto the base plate, hardens that resin up, and makes your prints. It's got an adjustable arm here, goes up and down, and uh, yeah, this gets mounted on there. I am going to get this thing all set up, probably do a quick time lapse of that, because it's probably not that interesting to you guys. I'm going to get some of this uh, extra tape and stuff off of here, extra bits of glue. And uh, whew, let's get our first print done. Now, before we get too deep down this rabbit hole, let's talk about the specs. This does have manual bed leveling. It did say that out of the box it was supposed to be pre-leveled. However, I found that to be incorrect, and I will talk about that in just a few moments. The print size is 127 millimeters long by 80 millimeters wide. It can also be 160 millimeters tall. The Hallett One has Wi-Fi on it, so you can connect wirelessly to your computer, your telephone, and you can connect wirelessly to the network to download the firmware. It does have a full-size USB Type-A to connect to the computer, and a USB Type-B that you plug in your little USB key in. You do interact with this machine through the 5-inch touchscreen. It's got big, colorful buttons. Pretty much tells you exactly what you need to do. One thing I will point out is to update the firmware, you're going to click on Refresh. Refresh. Now the screen here is about a 6-inch 2K monochrome LCD. It's got 120 watts in there. That's about 80% uniformity with the illumination. And it seems to do the job very, very, very nicely.
This has been the wildest of wild weeks. The first three days I had this printer were full of tears, they were full of heartache, they were full of all of the trials and tribulations of a first-time 3D printer person having no clue what they were doing. I had to watch a lot of tutorials and I had to read that manual like five times. But once I got my settings dialed in, once I figured it out, things went surprisingly good. I had zero issues after I got the basics down. This thing has been working 24-7 for the past four days, and I've come up with some really great stuff. Some of it I've actually already sold, some of it I've given away, and some of it I've just got sitting here on my desk to show you guys here in a minute. I've got it going pretty slow because I want it to be the highest quality I can get it, plus I'm not exactly completely comfortable with running this 3D software and running the Hallet 1, so I'm taking it nice and easy. I don't want to risk any more failures. So, what were causing some of the failures? First thing, leveling. Out of the box it says it's already pre-leveled. However, maybe it's because my table isn't exactly level, I'm not sure what it is, but I had to level it again. And again. And again. There's a trick to it. If you use two pieces of regular old printer paper, you can get this thing perfectly leveled. If you do it with one piece, it's not going to be perfectly leveled. If you use a piece of cardstock, it's not going to be perfectly leveled. If you use the little pieces of paper that come with it, it's not going to be perfectly leveled. <laughs> there was so much going on, and luckily I found a guy in a Facebook group and he said, just use two pieces of paper, and I did and I have had zero problems since then. Another problem I had is my first two or three failed prints, I ended up poking a hole through the FEP film. Now, they actually made it pretty simple to replace. There's 14 little Allen key things on the bottom of it. You just loosen them all up, throw the old one away, slap a new one on, poke a few holes in it, and then tighten it back up. And my second sheet did really, really well until I, uh, poked my thumbnail through it while I was trying to peel a little bit of page off of the corner, and yeah. So I'm on my third FAP sheet. I have went ahead and ordered some more from Amazon because I just know I'm going to be tearing these things up left and right. Big deal? Not if you know what you're doing. Did I know what I was doing? Absolutely not. <laughs> uh, next issue I had happened to be with the Hallet Box software. Um, the version that comes on the little key, it's... Uh, an old version. It's an alpha version and it shows. It basically ruined every print and once I realized that I saw a video about it and uh, yeah it took off like the bottom two or three millimeters of every support. So basically you would print the base and it would come out fine and then the rest of it would just vanish and it would be stuck to the FEP. Another reason I went through so many FEPs. So I went ahead and downloaded the new software from their website. They fixed the issue. Um, they actually have partnered up with Leechy Slicer, and they're going to be having a custom profile put into that program as well. So there's going to be two programs that are going to work extremely well with the Hallet 1, and I cannot wait for that. I check it every day, see if there's been an update. There hadn't been one yet, but the people from Leechy have confirmed within the Facebook groups that yes, it is coming. So stay tuned for that. Another problem I had, being a first-time printer, uh, yeah, I went with some black resin. Turns out black resin is really difficult to use because you can't see any details whatsoever. I was thinking to myself, oh, I'm going to use my little airbrush kit, I'm going to paint over these things, it's going to be no problem. But after seeing them and seeing how fine the detail is, I really just kind of want to leave them black. But then again, I also want to add some color to them so people who are more than two feet away will be able to tell what they're supposed to be. That one's on me. Now let's take a look at some of those prints. This is my first semi-success. This is a uh, lithopane here. It is my little avatar that I use on Facebook. It's kind of difficult to see, and as you can see, um, I didn't let the resin get completely cleaned off before I let it set. And yeah, it came out a little bit wonky. So this one was a fail. But this one was my fail. This was my absolute first thing I tried to print. And honestly, from the right angle, I think it looks pretty swell. <laughs> so after I updated the firmware, after I updated the software on the computer, and after I did the leveling with two pieces of paper, 
I did the uh, little matrix here, and you can see it came out absolutely perfectly. This was the first try. All of the dots are there, all of the holes are there, there's a perfect little point in there, and all of these lines happen to line up. And if you look at it from the right angle, you can see resin XP2 validation. So that one was a success, and this is what got me thinking, now I'm going to print some real cool stuff. My next not a fail print is the Eagle 5 from Spaceballs. It came out looking absolutely spectacular. All of the lines are there, all of the details are there. I love the wings, I love the little air conditioners on the top of it. There is so much to like. Check it out, there's the spare tire on the back. I know it's difficult for you guys to see one of the problems with printing with this black resin. I'm not going to make that mistake again, but there are a couple of little flaws there with the engines here. One of them is bent slightly crooked. That again is all on me. It had absolutely nothing to do with the machine. Um, when I scraped it off the platform and threw it into my cleaning solution, um, yeah, well, it wasn't cured and I was being rough with it, so I kind of bent it out of shape. So, yeah, that's my bad. Otherwise, it looks pretty stinking awesome, and the wife gets to take this one to work with her. My third not a fail print is made by the same artist as the Eagle 5 there. This is the Puffy Enterprise. Again, the details are spectacular. It looks absolutely fantastic. The engines there are great. Everything about this is just like, I would have bought this at the store if I had seen it. So that's how good that is. And it also goes to the artist because, man, he does some good work. He's also made a DeLorean. He's got a Klingon Bird of Prey. Um, and I think he's got a couple of other puffy vehicles as well. And I'll be definitely printing those out. I will leave his link down in the description. Now, if you happen to follow me on Instagram or on Facebook, you probably seen this little guy already. This is an Xbox avatar. And turns out you can export them into OBJ files, which you can then turn into the files that you can use with the Hallett One. So this right here is a little chibi version of myself from the Xbox avatars app. I did make a couple of other files where it's uh, different poses, like one with my arm in the air and I'm smiling but I wanted to have the uh, superhero pose here where he's stern and stuff. It came out looking really good. I do notice that uh, he's a little bit flat-faced. Again, that's my problem because when I was doing the scaling, I did remember I kind of squished him down some when I probably should have pulled him up some. But yeah, in the future, my next print of this guy is going to be absolutely wonderful. And the mom has... <laughs> And my mom has already asked for this one because it's imperfect, just like me. So even though my first three days were a pretty negative experience, once I got all my settings dialed in, I am in love with this machine. I will be printing things left and right from here on out. I've got at least 400 things now on my computer. I am ready to start printing just constantly. Um, I'm so excited about it. I've actually already ordered the Ender 3. And I know it's a little bit older filament printer, but I'm really into this. I think if you guys start with this Hallet 1, this might be kind of the gateway into uh, starting your own little printer farm. And I worry that that's where I'm headed. I'm not worried too much. It's a lot of fun. And you can make money off of it. There you go. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you learned a little bit about the Hallett One. I know I enjoyed making all of these things, and I know I learned a lot in the process. Hopefully, I conveyed some of that to you. I will leave a link in the description to not only the Hallett One, but I will leave a link to the artist of the little puffy vehicles. I'll leave a link to the uh, resin validator tool. I'll even leave a link to the page that you make the lithographs from. And, uh, yeah, if you want to make an Xbox avatar, get the Xbox avatar app. So hope you enjoyed. Like, subscribe, all that jazz, and I will see you all later. Bye.